Hello everyone and welcome back to McKegg's Movie Mayhem in association with WBBJ7 Eyewitness News. I am your host Eli McKegg and today I'm going to be doing the movie review for Deadpool and Wolverine. Hi Peanut, I'm going to need you to come with me right now. Look lady, I'm not interested. <laughs> Alright, well I'm sort of on the tick tick so upsy daisy. Here we go. Oh, hey, hey. Quite common in Wolverine's over. Now, Deadpool and Wolverine is the third installment of the Deadpool franchise, and it is also sort of a wrap up of the 20th Century Fox X Men universe of sorts, because this, mu this movie very much, at least in the credits, they show like a highlight reel. I, I'll say this they show a highlight reel of some great stuff that has happened over at 20th Century Fox, and it's very much an homage to this franchise that is no longer with us now. And I really like this story as well because the story is setting up the fact that Deadpool needs to save his universe because of shenanigans from the main antagonist. And the only way he can save this universe is to get an alternate version of Wolverine because his version of Wolverine died in the movie Logan. So having to try to find an alternate version of Wolverine to try and help him save his universe. If that makes any sense. Makes sense to me, but I'm a weird comic book guy who understands all that crazy stuff. But yeah, that's very much the plot of the movie. And this film does a really great job with the plot of the film, very much having Deadpool having to go on this journey of finding his self-worth, because that's something that in this film, Deadpool is trying to find his self-worth, trying to find something inside of him that makes him realize that he matters to people. And I think Ryan Reynolds plays Deadpool fantastically again and continues to add an extra layer of depth to the character of Deadpool that not many people would expect to be there because Deadpool, normally whenever you see a Deadpool movie, you just expect to hear jokes. You expect to hear all of the normal comedy that you would see in a Deadpool movie, but then they always hide these hidden messages of, what it means to have a family, or what it means to be in love, or what it means to have some self-worth. Like, th these movies tend to hide those factors in these films, and this film hides it beautifully, and then shows how Deadpool can have a lot of self-worth and why he is important to people. And that's the same with Wolverine. This version of Wolverine that we're getting is labeled the worst Wolverine in all of the multiverse, and having him also having to go on this journey of self-discovery and self-worth also works for his character. I think it does, this movie does a really great job establishing the relationship between this version of Deadpool and this version of Wolverine. And I think it also helps that this movie is rated R because, because Hugh Jackman gets to fully go to a point where Wolverine, he hasn't really been able to go to as Wolverine except only in Logan, but this film, allows him to go a little bit further with it, allows him to let loose in terms of the language, in terms of the violence, in terms of how he can present himself as a bit of a more mature version of Wolverine than we have seen in the X-Men movies and his own two Wolverine movies prior to Logan. And I think this film does a really great job establishing this, how different this version of Wolverine is from the Wolverine that we have known since the first X-Men movie all the way back in 2000. I think also that this movie handles a lot of the cameos very, very well because there are quite a bit of cameos in here. Like, I, it's hard for me to put a number to it, but there are cameos that some people would expect to see, and then there are other cameos that you wouldn't expect to see. Like, there was a scene that had some cameos where I was just thinking to myself, I can't believe we're getting this right now because I did not, I didn't expect to see these people in this movie, but we're seeing it and I'm happy with it. And all of them are purposeful. It's not just, hey, we're just gonna have a cameo in here and then be done with it. It's, no, these characters are important to the plot as well. It, they serve the point of pushing forward the plot and also adding extra character layers to Wolverine and to Deadpool. And I think that if you're someone that watches this movie and just says, oh, these are just cameos for cameos sake, then you're really missing the point of those characters in this particular film. This film has these characters in there because of the plot that's going forward. And I think they do a really good job balancing out the cameos. And I just, this movie was just a lot of fun. It was very funny to me. Like this is, 
this is sort of the humor that I enjoy a little bit because Deadpool, there are other humor that I enjoy, but Deadpool just hits this certain point where it's like, you know what you're expecting when you get a Deadpool movie, you know what type of humor he has, and so when you watch the movie and you see his humor, you're like, yep, this is exactly what I was expecting, and it's funny. And also self-referential humor, where if it's in the moment where Deadpool is gonna make fun of Disney or make fun of Marvel Studios or make fun of Fox, he's going to, and it's funny because he's doing it in a funny way. And the opening title sequence in this film is one of the funniest opening title sequences I have seen in a long time. I was laughing my butt off, and I can just say that I enjoyed this movie so much. I feel like if there's, if I had to think of one negative, and there is one negative, is that the villain plot really isn't substantial, but that's one of the main problems with a lot of Marvel movies, and even a lot of superhero films, that the villain plot and the villain themselves makes, they introduce the villain and they make them seem important, but overall to the grand scheme of things, it's like, oh, the villain's there, the villain's there to service the heroes and the hero's journey and all. And so it's not that strong of a villain character. And I think that's what happened with this film. The villain who is Cassandra Nova, Emma Corrin, who plays Cassandra Nova, did a really good job in the role. I just felt like the character could have been a lot better. I think the character could have been a lot stronger with the motivations and stuff. It just felt like Cassandra Nova was just a villain and just doing evil things because that's her thing. She's just an evil villain. And I feel like they could have done a lot more to flesh out her character or given her a better motivation than just, hey, I'm evil, I'm gonna do evil things, and I'm in this void because I am evil, and that's it. But yeah, I overall, in, I love this film so much. It hit, the comedy hit every single time. Sean Levy, the director, did such a fantastic job directing this film. Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman as Deadpool and Wolverine were amazing. Like, there was no doubt they were going to be amazing, but having them back in these roles is just amazing to see, and being able to see them find a way to make their versions of these characters work in this grander film was fantastic. Again, especially with Deadpool very much being the 20th Century Fox Deadpool from the X-Men movies, and then Hugh Jackman's Wolverine being a completely different version of Wolverine than we have known, but yet also feeling familiar. It's just being able to bring all those together is so much fun. It was so great to see this film. I love this film so much. And again, it could just be I just got out of the theater and that's how I'm feeling, and maybe in a few days I'll be like, oh, I didn't like it as much. But no, I. everything about this film has is very much what I need it to see. And I know there are going to be a lot of people that are going to go online and say, oh, the MCU is back now. Like, it was gone before, but it's back. I don't think the MCU has ever been gone. I think this is just another installment of the MCU to fully push the story forward that they're wanting to push. And I think that this was a fun movie. It was a great film. I very much recommend that if you are able to go watch this movie, you go out and you watch this film because, trust me, it is a fun time. It is a great time. You're going to have a lot of fun with this movie. And yeah, it's just great. Again, my main complaint is just I felt like the villain could have been a bit stronger. So overall, I give this film a four and a half out of five stars, a nine out of ten. Next week, I'm not going to be having a review because I am off next week. But the next week, I will be back. And for that week, I will be watching the video game adaptation Borderlands. But until then, I've been Eli McKegg with WBBJ7 Eyewitness News, and I hope you all remember to watch movies.